Okay, how many of you born and raised, born and raised right here in Florida? None. How many of you have ever been in an ice storm? Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. So I know who I'm talking to now. Storms don't always come in the form of hurricanes, do they? They come in ice storms. I was in one in North Carolina. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen until the electricity went off. And then it, I'm, I, I grew up here in Florida. Wasn't born here. Very few people are. But it got cold. And I didn't care for it much. Tornadoes. How many of you have ever been in a tornado? A few. It's not fun. Jeff Bartadelli was just telling us about all of that. Okay. Anybody not get one of our cards? Okay. You can go back to our little booth. Thank you so much. Give her a big hand. Wasn't she cute? It's amazing that she can come from my family. All right. So we need to write a plan. You've got to stay informed. The seminar you just heard is excellent of those kind of things. Seniors, you may need to give yourself a little extra time. Not because you're slow, not because you're stupid. It's just, it's just the way it is. As we get older, it takes a little bit more time. And if you have a disabled family member, you have a disabled neighbor, you might want to get with them and, and let time be on your side. Staying stress-free as a senior adult is really, really important. So what we need to do is we need to plan and prepare. No surprises will help you stay stress-free. How many of you went through the hurricanes 10, 11 years ago? Was it stressful? I'm seeing a lot of head shake. Yeah, I went through that. It was very stressful. A little bit of effort now can yield a big savings and peace of mind in the future. Plan ahead. Try to stay uh, well ahead of the storm. If you hear the weatherman say a storm, a hurricane is coming, take it serious. They're not just there trying to get you to come and watch them on TV. And how many of you ever realized that Jeff Bartadelli is about this tall? On TV, he looks, you know, John Matthews is probably this tall too. It's, it's amazing how little those guys really look. Um, having a plan will help you be in your comfort zone and be comfortable when things are not going your way. So how do you do this? Well, first of all, have a survival kit. He put it on the screen earlier, but we're going to go over it in just a minute. And that's what the backside of this card's for. And some of you that came in late, we'll get you some cards, so don't worry. Know your evacuation route. How many of you, if, you, if a storm popped up today and they said, leave Florida, which would never do, but if they said, leave Florida or just get off the East Coast, how many of you know the evacuation route? Mo about 10%. Well, the other group of us, we probably want to figure that out. We want to stay stress-free. So stay informed, but don't overdo it. How many of you got tired, though, when, when a storm is out there? You want to hear about it, but not all the time. It, it, you don't have to turn the TV on and listen to it 24-7. Another thing to stay stress-free is to allow your fr friends and family to help you. If you're, especially if you're a senior, and sometimes seniors have a hard time with this. We see it all the time in our pharmacies, is they just have a hard time letting people help them. Let friends and family help you because that's what they want to do. Another thing, and I'm going to say this again later, make a list of phone numbers like shelters, churches, doctors, uh, the, our pharmacy, Butterfields. Make a list of the phone numbers that, of places you're going to need to go to uh, and a list of places that you're going to be so that you can give it to your family. Because they may need to find you. So how to care for a disabled family member or a friend. How many of you know somebody that's disabled and if a storm came up right now, whether it's a tornado or we're just electricity's off, how many of you know somebody that's disabled? Quite a few of you. There's a lot of folks that are either older or they're just disabled for, for whatever reason. Bass Pro Shops has something right now, and they're trying to give it away today, and it's a, a, a basically a little weather radar thing or weather radio thing that is in the event of a storm and you don't have any electricity. Well, if electricity goes off and you're disabled or you're senior or you're just whatever, be ready for a camping trip. 
How many of you like camping? Raise your hand. How many of you like a forced camping trip? It's like you're going to do it whether you like it or not. I don't see any hands. Nobody does. You don't like a forced camping trip. But in the event of a storm, you don't have electricity. Well, if it's in August or September, guess what? It's hot. You don't usually have water. If you have a well, your pump doesn't work. Sometimes you can't drink the water. And the biggest thing is you don't have any normal. There's no normal at all. So when you used to pop something in the microwave, forget about it. When you used to go to the refrigerator, open the door and go, you don't do it anymore because you know you've got to keep that cold. There's no normals. Now, if you're a caregiver, and that could be a professional caregiver. We see them all the time in our pharmacies. But if you're a son or a daughter and you're a caregiver to your parents, plan and prepare. Help your loved one or if, uh, whoever, if you're working for them, help them be comfortable when things are not normal. So how do you do that? And I would encourage you to think about this for yourself. First thing is have some normal things around. Have some favorite items. If a person likes to play cards, have a deck of cards. If you have kids, have their stuffed animal. Have their favorite game. If you have kids, believe me, it will pay big dividends. Have their medications. Have things around that's going to help things be normal. Discuss your plans with the family and doctors. This is really, really important if you are um, taking medications, if you're sick, if you just had surgery, or you're getting ready to have surgery. Discuss your plans with your family and doctors. Make sure you have a disaster supply kit for you and for them. If you're a caregiver, whether it's a son, daughter, or a professional caregiver, have a, a, a kit, a survival kit for you and for them. Again, make those phone numbers. I can't stress that enough. Make sure that if, if you're caring for your, son, your, your mom or your dad or a relative or whatever, and you're that caregiver, and they've got those little bracelets... You know what I'm talking about? The bracelets that you can wear, has her name on it, medications, maybe a problem. Make sure they have them on. Because you might get separated from them. If it's a really bad storm, that happens. Make sure those bracelets are on. If you're leaving the area, make sure you know where your medical treatment can be gotten when you get where you're going. I can't tell you how many times that's so easy to think, okay, I'm going to go to my son's house because we got a storm coming here. I'm going to go to my son's house. Well, where's your son's house? Is there a pharmacy close by? If you've got to go to a doctor, is the doctor close by? Make sure you know where you're going and that treatment can be gotten there. Another one, and this is so common, but it's so easy to forget about, and it really is no excuse today with all the little things you can get for your phones, but charge all your batteries. This little guy right here. How long, how long does your battery last on a typical day? Okay, so at Disney, he can use this thing for 12 hours, but that's on and off. If he left it on, about four hours. <clears throat> So if in the event of a storm, he can't charge this, which means he can't go anywhere. So he, when he gets home today, he charges it up. It's ready to go the next time. That's really important, especially if he had to get out of that thing and walk because there's no carrying it. Wheelchairs, strollers like that, oxygen, if you need batteries for that, your cell phone, make sure your batteries are charged. Now, who would like to hear some tips and tricks and little ideas to help you get through an uncomfortable situation? Like, we're, we're going to have to camp at home for a few days because electricity's out, whether it's a hurricane or a tornado, or they're just replacing the big green box out by, by the road, and we're not going to have electricity for a while. Who wants to hear some tips and tricks? A few of you. Let me ask it again. Who wants to hear some tips and tricks? Okay, good. All right, you guys are waning on me a little bit. Who did not get a card? All right. I'm going to walk around and talk at the same time. Some tips and tricks for you. Let's take a look at this. 
Refill your medications if possible with a two-week supply prescribed by your doctor. Who else? How much, why is that important? Anybody know? Because where you're going, if they don't have your prescription on file, you can't get your prescription filled. If they don't have electricity at your doctor's office, then they're not going to be able to, I'll get to you. They, they will uh, not be able to fill your prescription. The second item on there, written orders regarding your medical care and medical records. Make sure you have your medical records copied. If you can scan them, scan them. With our cell phones these days, you can keep it on your cell phone. You can get it to your children where you're going. There's another one. Okay. Um, so it's very, very, very important to have your medical records. Need another one? Um, I'll come around. Number three, important papers, including your valid ID, curtain address, your health uh, plan card, Medicare cards, Medicaid cards, insurance cards, all that good stuff. Need to make sure you have a copy of those with you. I encourage you to, uh, if you can't have the real thing, have a copy. Who else needs a card? Okay. Number four, first aid kit. Well, what do you put in a first aid kit? Somebody shout out something you would have in a first aid kit. Oh, perfect. Hold that up. I don't know what booth out there had that, but it was a little first aid kit. I saw those. But uh, definitely you want that in there. Things like Band-Aids, uh, Neosporin. Uh, what else would, would you put in a normal first aid kit in the event of having to travel for a storm? Antiseptic. I heard that. Okay. S say it real loud. Aspirin, absolutely aspirin. Anybody else while I'm walking around? Okay. All right, so have a first aid kit. Personal hygiene items. Again, I cannot tell you how important that is. Extra eyeglasses and contacts. I wear contacts. If, I, if my contacts somehow just disappeared right now, first of all, you would disappear because I couldn't see you. I'd see a blur. And then you would not, you would want to leave here before I left here to drive home because I would be all over the road or I'd be going like 10 miles an hour. So another pair of glasses, uh, contacts, that kind of thing. One gallon of water per day per person. These are just little tips and tricks that's going to help you. Now if you look at that card that I just gave you, and we're going to get to the drugs exposed by water in just a second, but at the bottom of it has a $5 coupon. Come by our pharmacy. Everything you just said that you need to have in that first aid kit, we carry. You can basically get it almost free. Anybody like free? Shake your head if you like free. If you're breathing out there, I know you like free. That's one part of the reason of being here today. Food. Avoid foods that will make you thirsty. Why is that? It's going to make you drink more water, which you don't have. Those of you that went through the hurricanes 10 years ago, you know how valuable water is. Uh, Ready-to-eat meals, fruits and vegetables, MREs. Anybody remember the MREs? What an invention that is. And those, food, those things are really good, too. Foods for infants, elderly persons, or persons with uh, special dietary needs. Make sure you have that stuff. Sanitation and hygiene supplies, toilet paper. Think that's important during the storm? Yeah. It is. A trick is you can fill the bathtub full of water, make sure you plug it up good, and you can fill your toilet with it. And you can flush your toilet. It's important to have toilet paper, soap, liquid detergent, feminine supplies, personal hygiene items, uh, moisture wipes, shampoo, insect repellent. Oh my gosh, insect repellent for sure. Insect repellent? Did I say that wrong? Oh, I said it right. Good. Some special needs for babies. If you have a baby and the electricity is off, it's no fun. I'm just telling you what. It is no fun at all. Formula, diapers, bottles, pacifiers, pacifiers. Did I say pacifiers? You want them. 
And a pacifier can be all kinds of things, but pacify your baby. You might want powdered milk and any kind of special medications. Um, Non-prescription drugs, just some more tips and tricks for you. Aspirin, anti-diarrhea medication. Listen, if you drink water that you're not supposed to drink during the storm, and you start getting diarrhea, you can get, you can get uh, dehydrated very quickly. So you're gonna want something like that. Antacid is also very important. Um, heart and high blood pressure medications. Copy of your medical prescriptions and definitely copies of your insurance cards. Anything that you guys thought maybe I missed that we, would, we should have in a supply kit, a survival kit? Any other tricks and tips? Insurance records, life insurance, medical, oh. pictures of your contents in your home for insurance purposes, name of your insurance agent for your homeowners, automobile, you think this is just practical stuff. Yeah, I know I've got it. But yet, if, you're, if you've got three feet of water in your home, you probably don't have it anymore. So, and I'm a big per, a person of um, paperless. Scanning's the way to go. Yes. Cash. And if the electricity's out, forget the bank having the ATMs ready to work for you right away. My daughter the other day, I don't know if she caused this or not, but she went in the bathroom and flipped on the light switch and the lights went out. And we heard a boom. It happened at the same time. The big green box out in the front between my house and my neighbor kind of exploded. I don't know that my daughter did it, but it was hot and it was not fun. And they had to come put a new box in and they didn't get there till the next day. That's camping without a storm. So you might want to think about just those kind of things can happen to you. Now, what about the little furry friends? I just saw a couple of them in here. Uh, furry friends for our uh, trips when there's a hurricane or a storm. They also have medications and medical records. Make sure you have them. Sturdy leashes, harnesses. Make sure you have that. If you have a pet carrier, make sure you bring that along. Current photos, because they get lost. They can wander off. Food, potable water, bowls, all those things, the litter pan, those things that you might take for granted now, but need later. Their uh, immunization records, their bed, their toys, treat them just like you would a kid. And the last thing is I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the last two pieces on this card. And uh, Some people came in, did anybody not get a card? Uh, one lady in the back. So let me run back. Read this with me. Drugs exposed to water. For life-saving drugs exposed to water when replaced may not be readily available. If the container is, is contaminated but the contents appear unaffected, if the pills are dry, in other words, there you go, the pills may be used until a replacement can be obtained. However, if the pill is wet, it is contaminated and should be discarded. If you've got medications and they get exposed to water, and that water might not be sanitary, you need to get rid of them. It's very, very important. And then, in the event of a storm, if, uh, even if it's not exposed to water, try to get a new prescription as soon as you can. Insulin storage. How many of you are diabetics in here? Anybody? Got a few hands going up. Try to keep the insulin away from direct heat and out of direct sunlight, but if you are using ice, also avoid freezing the insulin. Once property stored insulin becomes available, discard and replace the insulin vials that have been exposed to extreme conditions. Extremely, extremely important. Is this helpful today? Yeah? Good. There's a lot to know, but a lot of it is practical. It's kind of common sense. It really is. If you just think about it, prepare, try to get away, uh, get ahead of the storm, and that'll help you be stress-free. Think about the seniors around you. Think about the disabled around you because they will need your help whether they act like it or not. 
All right, folks, it's been wonderful being with you. I'm sure there's another wonderful speaker coming up here in just a few minutes. Our uh, table is right through this door if you'd like to come by and spin the wheel for a free gift. Thanks so much, guys.